Here we've got an ideal transformer. So when we see that word, we assume 100% transmission of power. So our equations are, are much more simply configured. We've got 600 turns on its primary side. So our primary coil is the one that's connected directly to our power source. So there's 600 turns on this side. And then on the other side, it drops down to 100 turns on the secondary side. And the secondary side is the one that gets the induced EMF from the primary. Now when the turns drop like that, you're capturing less of the magnetic field because you have less turns on the secondary side. So you'll have less, a lower EMF on the secondary side than you do on the primary. So we call this a step down transformer. When the voltage drops, it's a step down. When the turns drop, it's a step down. What will be the secondary voltage? Well, it's a simple matter of a ratio. The number of turns in the primary divided by the number of turns in the secondary is equivalent to the voltage in the primary divided by the voltage in the secondary. And we want to solve for Vs. So we can multiply both sides by Vs to get it on top. And then once we have that, we can multiply by Ns and divide by Np and we get an equation that looks like this. My secondary voltage is Vp times Ns all over Np. So my secondary voltage is my primary voltage, which in this case is 1000 volts AC. Has to be AC for a transformer to work. My secondary number of windings is 100 turns and my primary number of windings was 600 turns. So you can see that my voltage will have dropped by a factor of six, and you end up getting a secondary voltage of 167 volts AC. Now what about the current? Well, the current, there has to be a trade-off. If your voltage drops, that allows you to have more current. If you increase the voltage, if you have a step-up transformer, the trade-off is you can get less current out of it. And that's simply because power in has to equal power out. Power in, power out like that. And my input power is V primary times I primary. And my output power is V secondary times I secondary for an ideal transformer where we're assuming no losses. Now if I get all my I's on one side and all my V's on the other, I get this equation. The voltage in the primary divided by the voltage in the secondary is equal to the current in the secondary divided by the current in the primary. And remember, this is the same thing as our number of windings, our ratio of windings. So for part three, we can write the ratio of the windings, right? Vp over Vs is the same thing as the ratio of the windings, which we have. But instead of primary being on top, it now switches. I prime, I secondary, look at that, I made the mistake already. I secondary over I primary. And that's what we're gonna solve right there. So we get 600 turns divided by 100 turns equals I secondary divided by the primary current, which is given as 100 amps. And when I multiply both sides by 100, I end up getting my secondary current is 600 amps. Now the primary windings are now reconnected to a 1000 volt battery that's DC, direct current, for a long time. And what is the secondary voltage? Well, kind of a trick question. DC, instead of connecting it to an alternating current like you see here, it's like hooking it up to a battery. And if you hook it up to the battery, the current only flows in one direction. So notice it says after a long time. So imagine you close the switch on that battery and what happens is this thing starts to generate a magnetic field that immediately balloons out and passes through the secondary coil. But after a long time, that magnetic field just remains stationary. It's like putting a bar magnet in a set of coils and just leaving it there. You're not inducing any EMF. You gotta remember the equation, and I'll put it in pink here. In order to induce an EMF, you have to be changing the flux. And flux is related to magnetic field and the area that's capturing it. So we're not changing the flux at all because it's a DC source. 
the, the uh, magnetic field lines are just remaining stationary. So the secondary voltage would just be zero volts.